and welcome back. We are talking Red Wings today. Uh, here are the news items we'd like to touch on today. Uh, let's start with the most important. Tyler Bertuzzi has been re-signed for a two-year contract at nine and a half million over two years. Um, this feels okay. I don't see anything wrong with that, especially if he's a 30-goal scorer. Uh, if he's coming back from back injury, uh, which, I mean, we've seen it. Uh, Anderson in, in Montreal proved that you can uh, come back from that kind of an injury, and that's important. Uh, another thing there is, though, you, you don't know what you're getting. So uh, is that too much for Bertuzzi? Not really, because it's a short contract, and uh, the Wings have nothing but money to give right now. Uh, <laughs> that's important, is that they could resign whoever they want, um, just as long as they don't have to worry about long-term contracts. That's the biggest thing. Um, <clears throat> that being said, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that contract, and if Bertuzzi is not the fit, uh, but he's still productive, He's a good trade target because you'll have another year locked up next year. Uh, we know that there were teams that were interested in signing Bertuzzi. Um, Toronto comes to mind. Uh, the Islanders come to mind. There's anybody who wants to have a player like Bertuzzi on their team. He's a good play style. He doesn't play a style that necessarily means he's going to play forever. Uh, he does play a little rough, and that's not great on the body, and you can see from back surgery. Um, but that being said, I, I think it's a fine deal. I think it's uh, fair for both sides. If he performs, he'll get another contract. If he doesn't perform, he'll probably go somewhere else and have a chance um, at a lower rate. So uh, other items of interest, uh, two free agent signings that I'd like to talk about. Uh, Pius Suter, a uh, Swede who was went undrafted and was playing for Chicago last year. Uh, this is a guy who... From all accounts, everything I heard, uh, Chicago was definitely upset that they lost him. Uh, and I'm not sure what Chicago is doing. Uh, and I feel like maybe there's a video to be made about Chicago itself and where they're at entirely right now. Because currently, uh, they're a mess, not just as a team, but in both the direction they're going and the narrative that's going on about them. Uh, and I, I feel like some of the moves they're making are a smokescreen uh, for Stan Bowman and other people in the industry that really need to be, it needs to be addressed. And uh, maybe something should actually be taken seriously about the situation rather than just letting them sign a bunch of people and hope that they make a run to the playoffs, I guess. Uh, that being said, I will talk about that later. But uh, Pia Suter is a great grab. He definitely feels like a guy who just needs more time on the ice. And with a little bit more time, uh, you'll see more, uh, hopefully more, uh, you know, goals and assists. And we'll see where that goes. Uh, I do see him on a third line. And I do think that he has a, uh, a future in Detroit. He, he's definitely... When you look at the way that they're building, they're building in a way that looks a little bit like an expansion team. They're going and grabbing guys who they think, with more time in the ice, will flourish. Uh, Adam Ernie is the great example because we're going to talk about Mitchell Stevens from Tampa Bay. Uh, he, of course, is... I think another Adam Ernie, or at least that's what Eiserman thinks. And if Ad if Eiserman thinks that, we should at least give it the try. And for a six-round uh, draft pick, who cares? That is worth... You got a guy who was playing in the NHL, played 45 games, had uh, a few goals and a few assists in 45 games. Not a, not a key contributor to the Tampa Bay Lightning, obviously, which is why they don't seem to be mind too much that they uh, parted ways with him. Um, Tampa Bay... People that I, I spoke to weren't as crazy about losing him as much as Chicago people were about losing Suter. Uh, that's that's important to say. But uh, Tampa Bay has a weird relationship with Steve Eiserman, and that I think guys like Mitchell Stevens, who 
generally would probably go for a little bit more. Uh, guys like Adam Ernie uh, just get to go to Detroit because Iserman believes in them and uh, Tampa Bay doesn't have the room on the ice. They just have too much talent, unfortunately. What a troubling problem to have, right? Uh, that being said, I think same thing. Mitchell Stevens has a feel that he will play more minutes and be better. Uh, that being said, I don't you don't know how much better, uh, but uh, you, you hope. And certainly talking about Adam Ernie, let's talk about Adam Ernie, Jakub Verana going to arbitration and what that means. Uh, so in in arbitration, they're waiving the qualifying offer. They think they deserve more money. Um, in Adam Ernie's situation and Verana's, you get to choose at some point. Uh, and, and usually these get fixed before they go be t before an arbiter. But if they did go to an arbiter, the arbitration board, or if in this case it's just one arbiter, uh, they would decide whether the price is right what the deal should be and whether they should get one or two years. Um, usually if you're UFA, you get the choice if you're going to do one or two years. So Adam Ernie has an interesting situation there, but I do think both of them are very interested in still playing for Detroit. So it's not a situation where they want to cause trouble. They just want to get their money. And there's a lot of money to be thrown around in Detroit. Uh, Iserman's been very stingy with his money. Uh, that's why he was still under the floor uh, the last we talked about this. And that's important uh, that uh, if he's not given money to free agents, and I don't think, you know, he was on record saying he doesn't build that way. He doesn't want to go out and get Taylor Hall, let's say. Because if you go to get Taylor Hall and you have to pay him X amount of money to move from Boston to here because he's been moving around every season... It costs more money than what he actually is worth on the ice. Um, I think Boston got a good deal with Taylor Hall. Um, but at the other side of it, if you're asking him to leave, he's going to want more. And can you afford to pay Taylor Hall $7 million a year? Yes, you can this year. But does he want a one-year deal? Probably not. Uh, at some point, you want to pay somebody else. Uh, you have people in the pipeline that are your own guys that you have to pay. So you have to be willing to fight against buying a guy like Petrangelo for the blue line. Um, because by the time that deal is over, it will have not aged well. Um, you know, look at P.K. Subban. You know, what did you pay in New Jersey for P.K. Subban? You basically thought you were going to go to the playoffs and instead you've completely undone un, the undoing of your rise to power and you've pushed back being a contender or even being relevant by a couple years because he wasn't the player that you thought he was worth for that money when you could have spent that money somewhere else um it's not a not a knock on pk suban it's not a knock on new jersey everyone thought that that made sense at the time and it just doesn't. It, it, more often than not, when you spend that big money on the big free agent, and I think I've heard this before, uh, you're spending A dollars for B talent. And that's not worth it in the end. You should build your team through the draft, through being smart, you know, and then supplementing your talent in the free agency with guys who are on the third line, the fourth line, your power uh, power play, PK specialists, things like that. And I think goaltenders too. Um, obviously, we now all of a sudden look like we have a good system for goaltenders when a year ago you would say that we may have had one of the worst pipelines for goaltenders. Um, so things are looking better and uh, things change quickly and that's that's important things can change quickly uh, so that's the that's it for now on the Red Wings we're going to talk a little bit about the Pistons and the draft that they had uh, in the next uh, video and then get back to uh, you know talking more about wings when there's more to talk about uh, also the Tigers finished up so maybe I'll do a, a split episode with Pistons and Tigers coming up talking about the 
the trade deadline for Major League Baseball and the draft for basketball. Uh, and then, boy, we are close to actually having to talk about the Lions. I am worried because you still have no idea what to expect. And now that Aaron Rodgers is back for a season here in uh, Green Bay, do you just start thinking about what top 10 pick you'd like to have if you're the Lions? Or are you going to surprise everyone and be in the middle and be useless? Because being in the middle is the worst place to be if you're a football team. <laughs> okay, so we will talk uh, shortly about the Pistons draft, probably uh, later today or tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk about the minor amount of change that went on with the Tigers uh, at the end of the draft with Norris uh, being gone. And uh, we'll uh, look forward to that. So take care. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, we are unofficially, not officially at all, uh, sponsored, yeah, that's right, not sponsored by a fantastic uh, app that is out there called List List. Give it a try.